Good evening. This is Marty Gabler, and I am beside Still Waters, hoping you and some of your friends will be able to join me beside Still Waters as we look into the Word of God, as we pray, as we seek the face of the Lord, and just see how He wants to edify us tonight. And we are looking tonight into Psalm 33. Psalm 33 is our text, verse 20 through 22, in the Amplified Version. We are going to be reading about earnestly waiting on the Lord. Earnestly waiting on the Lord. Uh, I imagine some of us are dealing with situations and trials of life to where we <laughs> really need to be about the business of earnestly seeking the Lord. And that's what we will do. We will seek the Lord tonight in prayer. We will read what the Word says about earnestly seeking the Lord. Uh, the psalmist talks about the value of earnestly seeking the Lord. Uh, I think we can become so earnestly caught up in the, the trials and the rigors of life and the calling on our lives and dealing with people, dealing with family, dealing with our jobs, uh, dealing with trying to get taxes paid, the rent paid, uh, dealing with uh, issues that we weren't counting on, health issues. And we get caught up in dealing earnestly with them. I don't know about you, but uh, my <laughs> insurance company uh, sends me different pieces of literature and communication from time to time. And if I read those correctly, it's like uh, they don't believe I have any other concerns, no, nothing else to put my money toward. Uh, you know, they continually send me notices. Uh, Mr. Gabler, you don't have enough coverage on this. You don't have enough coverage on that. And for X amount of dollars, Mr. Gabler, we can solve that for you readily. And uh, you, you, you get to something else. You, you get your car to the shop. And uh, the shop is uh, kind of of the attitude like, well, you've got to have transportation, you know. Uh, this is really the urgent need to spend these thousands of dollars on this particular aspect of your automobile to ensure that you get it. And true, we need those automobiles. We need our home. Uh, to be what it should be. We need a good roof over our head and we need good appliances and we need good wiring. We need all of these other things. But the list I've been making, probably, what, 12, 13, 14, 15 things um, can just begin to take what earnestness there is in us whatever earnestness we can give ourselves to emotionally, mentally, psychologically, and we begin to focus on these things, especially when that list gets higher and higher and all the papers there, the bills and the, the, the opportunities to get more coverage or a better service contract, etc., etc., our earnestness can go to those things and... In the meantime, we're groping over here for uh, money in our checkbook. Uh, we're, we're groping and trying to uh, find if there's enough money in this checkbook. And, well, if we have a, another account somewhere, a savings account or something, we're, we try to find a little put away there or... But let's tonight take a special time to bring our earnestness back 
to where it belongs on the Lord on his word let's decide to allow the psalmist these aren't just songs these aren't just poetry uh, that some guy wrote a long time ago and it had a religious angle to it or he mentioned God a few times this is the Word of God and if David encouraged us with certain pieces of scripture like we're going to read tonight he implemented these things he turned as an act of his will he turned his earnestness upon the Lord he called it waiting upon the Lord and I think we miss the point if we kind of see waiting as this sort of posture you know well I'll just kind of sit here and hope for the best David's waiting was what the scholars what the researchers call an earnest waiting that that's what they tell us about Psalm 33 and other places that David mentions waiting it's an earnest waiting and I will admit that the word earnest is not something we are going to hear very often in today's culture it has very old origins in the English language but it is an expectant waiting Let, let's read our scriptures let's read those scriptures we're in Psalm 33 and our theme tonight is wait earnestly for the Lord wait earnestly for the Lord there's waiting to be done it doesn't matter if you're you know somebody like uh, dr. Billy Graham or you know um, Smith Wigglesworth or uh, somebody like that you're, you're still going to find yourself waiting on the Lord at this time or that time at this juncture or that juncture or when something has developed just so far and then come to a halt or something has barely developed and then seems to be drifting backwards uh, are you prayed and prayed nothing's happened we're waiting on the Lord verse 20 of Psalm 33 says our inner selves wait earnestly for the Lord there it is in the Amplified he is our help and our shield he is our help and our shield we are waiting when we wait for the Lord we are waiting for God to manifest himself manifest that which we are needing that which we are uh, requiring to have to be fully equipped or to reach the goal or to be fulfilled we are waiting for God to manifest himself in his good time you know I've had it said to me once before you know when I was uh, uh, told by my mother as a boy to do such and such and or to go get something or whatever and I according to her opinion her opinion took too much time to do it and when I came back with what she had sent me for or uh, the answer to the message she had sent me with to someone or when I came back she said well it looks like you took your own good time and that has for a large part been a negative statement 
that type of terminology. But when we talk about God taking his own good time, we're talking about the word good. It's good. His time is good. His timing is good. Uh, God is taking in to the circumstances and to the situation uh, possibilities here, possibilities there, persons uh, that might affect the situation or are affecting the situation over there. Maybe uh, uh, a sec set of circumstances over here that God is working in. His hand is moving here and over there. His hand is moving above. His hand is moving below. And all we are seeing with our earnestness is the earnestness of what we're having to deal with right here. If the water level's up to here, you know, we're, we're, we're treading water and, and every once in a while sniffing a little bit up and choking and, and we're just praying, oh God, you know, are you sure you understand? Are you sure you're aware of my situation? The water level's up to here. Uh, if God is omniscient, he knows where the water level is. And he knows just how much water we're having to sniff up. But as one old timer put it, waiting is training. Waiting is a blessing. Waiting is helpful. God has reasons for everything he does. God's does act in his own good time. Let us just commit that to him. Father God, right now in prayer, we commit to you that your time, we make that confession. We get it out into the atmosphere. We speak it out of our own mouths. It's going right back into our own ears. And we declare that your timing is good. Your time is good. The time you do things in is good. We know that the extended circumstances or the intense circumstances are not what combine to hold you back and cause you to take more time. That's, that, that is irrelevant. It's not even considered. But you in your loving kindness that the psalmist spoke of on numerous occasions. You, in your loving kindness and understanding, act in your time that is good and cannot be anything but good. We're asking for strength. Here we are, Lord, with hands raised. giving a prayer before you tonight, asking, give us strength. If we've got to tread some water, to tread that water. If we've got to walk up a mountain or climb a mountain, to walk up or climb that mountain, we're asking for strength. Give us understanding. Help us, Lord. Help us to grasp the, the significance of where we are at the moment and the significance that your hand is moving in spite of what we view as non-activity from our angle, from our point of view. Uh, my friends, our, our point of view is so limited. Our considerations, the things we weigh, the mathematics we use in weighing everything, and the logistics we use in figuring uh, it's taking this long to do this, or God hasn't done that yet, we are finite. We're finite, and we miss it. We just miss it, so we've got to wait on God. But we wait earnestly, expectantly, the uh, picture that comes to my mind as I meditate on that, read it, pray about it, uh, the picture that comes to my mind is one of, uh, I was watching uh, a news broadcast and uh, a soldier was returning home and, and this particular reporter was doing a human interest type of, of report. A soldier was returning home. He had been gone for, and he had been in a war zone for many months. 
and the camera goes over to the plane door opening and the soldiers beginning to come out and and then uh, the human interest story involved one particular young wife and her baby in particular and one particular soldier coming off although the news report was talking about the, the we were so glad that our soldiers were back and appreciate the service they uh, have done for their country and she was covering all of that but the camera would go back to that young mother holding that little baby that was maybe two maybe three months old four maybe and the baby was just kind of looking around not sure what was going on there was so much noise so much excitement uh, a band was playing and as the camera would go to the soldier uh, it was a surprise, you know. The soldier didn't know she was going to be there with the baby. The news uh, reporter in the station she worked for had worked it all out, and it was going to be such a great, great story. And and the soldiers and, and the camera focuses in on that. So it says, "There he is. That's him. He's coming off now. He's he's he has no idea. He's got such a wonderful pri surprise waiting for him." And then the camera would pan back and focus in on the young mother with her baby brought tears to my eyes. That young woman with the babe in her arms was tiptoeing absolutely as high as she could get on her tiptoes to see over the other soldiers that they had her up front, but the other soldiers that were getting off the plane in front of him were partially blocking the view of him, although the camera was focused right in on his shoulders and his face and and he was looking all around the crowd and everything and and and, and and they kept talking about the surprise it was going to be and, and the camera kept coming back to that young mother and young wife and her face was just so excited. Just her expression so expectant and it showed her standing up on the very tips of her toes so that she could see her husband and her infants, her little baby's father. I think that I have that pretty accurate when the psalmist is saying, wait expectantly. We wait expectantly for God. We're not just sitting back and bemoaning uh, how high the water's getting and how much we're having to tread. We're expectant. We're, we're up on tiptoes. We're not up on tiptoes to try to get out of the water. We're up on tiptoes to see our Lord's manifestation, His intervention, His answer, to see Him. Verse 21 says, In Him, for in Him does our heart rejoice because we have trusted, relied on, and been confident in His holy name. Name in the Bible represents character, it represents the person, who they are, what you get. That's why God gave His names to Israel. Jehovah Sidkenu, I am the Lord your righteousness. Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord your healer. Jehovah Shema, I am the God who is there in the moment. Jehovah Jireh, I am the Lord, your provider. He, he gave us these names, these wonderful... See, it's His character. It's who He is. It's what we can expect. It's what we know we're going to get when we hear His name or when we call His name. Hmm. We have help. Verse 21, For in Him does our heart rejoice, because we have trusted, relied on, and been confident in His holy name. We have trusted Him. His character, and His character does not fail. Our God does not fail. His word does not fail. And then verse 22 says, Let your mercy and loving kindness, Lord, be upon us. Hmm, that's our prayer. Let's pray that. Lord, let your mercy and kindness be upon us. From the top of our head all the way down to the soles of our feet. We ask you, we pray that your mercy and loving kindness be upon us. 
in proportion, and here's the latter part of that verse that the psalmist is writing there. First, in that first half of verse 22, he says, Let your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. And then the last half of that verse says, In proportion to our waiting and hoping for you. Mm. We wait for you, Lord God. Mm. Our confidence is in you. It has been said that doubts breed sorrow, but confidence creates joy. Doubts breed sorrow, but confidence creates joy. Kathy got this revelation a few months ago as she was waking very early one morning from a dream and she was just in prayer and just it was like she uh, she's coming out of sleep she's just going right into prayer or the prayer she was in already was just continuing and building and it was like the holy spirit just spoke to her heart and the lord said your confidence in me gives me access to you I want to say it again. Let it sink in. I believe this is some some awesome revelation uh, for all of us. When the Lord says, Your confidence in me is my access to you. I think that's what Psalm 33 verses 20 through 22 are telling us. Lord, our confidence is you. You are our confidence. Your presence is our confidence. Your word is our confidence. And our confidence is in you, Lord. We give you preeminence. Our earnestness is being placed upon you tonight, O oh God. We're pulling back so much of that earnestness from the, the water we're having to tread. We're pulling back earnestness from uh, th those papers and bills and and offers to up our ante on different coverages and things. We're, we're pulling our, our, our earnestness back from focusing on those things and, and all of the uh, and the strain and the yuck that goes with it. And, and we're putting our earnestness upon you, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. Hmm. And you will we hope and trust. And we will tiptoe in our expectancy of seeing you manifest and come to us in answer and manifestation and fulfillment, God. Hallelujah. Our inner selves, verse 20 says, wait earnestly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. He's our defense. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his countenance shine on you. God is for you, not against you. And I declare to you that you're going to rest tonight with and go to bed. When you lie down your, yeah, and put your head on the pillow, you're going to have confidence and, and earnest expectation and waiting upon the Lord. And may the Lord meet you in dreams and visions. May the Lord meet you with his presence and comfort you. And may the Lord give you healing sleep. And may the Lord give you revelatory sleep, revealing himself and his purposes to you in your sleep. God bless. Love you. Praying for you. Laying my hand on that screen. Praying over my friend list daily. God bless you. And the Lord keep you all through this night and on the morrow. Blessings. <music>